so many uh, country specialists, uh, support organization specialists, and adaptation planning. This is a key opportunity for us to, to, to take stock of, 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 of the advancements and, and strengthen the, uh, the, the adaptation planning work we're, we're doing as we move forwards. In, I'm, I'm humbled as we sit in this beautiful room in the city of Seoul and our world is dealing with very serious challenges uh, as a result of climate change. People losing lives um, and, and livelihoods in the last few days in the Caribbean, floods in Southeast Asia, becoming more and more challenging to, to grow the food, to produce the food, the delicious food that we've been eating over the last couple of days. At the same time, uh, as feeling these, these sobering realities, as, as Howard Bamsey, Executive Director of the, of the Green Climate Fund, uh, said yesterday morning, we have a, some, some opportunities. Thanks to the foresight of the international community, Conference of the Parties to the UNFCCC, the Board to the Green Climate Fund, we have an opportunity to really invest strategically in planning adaptation actions for the coming years. Let's use this well to really drive action and investment. And, and this is why I'm so happy to share some, 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 some experiences and some, 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 some ideas about how to access funds and resources in order to, to drive this adaptation planning moving forwards. I just want to remind uh, some points that Howard Bounty made, made uh, yesterday. What, what, why are we doing this? What's the big picture? It's about understanding impacts and vulnerabilities and then really designing the strategies and actions to address them, building ownership, and ultimately driving financing to invest in these strategies to address the vulnerabilities that were identified at the beginning. It's this full picture of planning, driving investment um, that's, a, that's a key piece um, and that we're, that we're looking to support through, through adaptation planning support program in the, through the GCF. And this is, this is how GCF, the continuum of financing works. Uh, specifically resulting from NDCs, uh, we have we have a support program where we can support adaptation planning and action in countries that will that uh, will, among other things, produce specific project concepts. We can support the project preparation and ultimately result in high quality funding actions through through project proposals. This is relevant for GCF, but also relevant on a broader continuum in, in, in broader financing opportunities. So we really encourage that the adaptation plans that are produced articulate actionable activities that seek funds for investment in the private sector, domestic, public, um, international cooperation, including but not exclusively to the Green Climate Fund. Just to clarify, the Green Climate Fund's readiness program uh, as, as approved by the, the boards of the Green Climate Fund includes four components. The first three year are, have a cap, are eligible to receive up to $1 million per country per year. There are very few countries in which this cap is being fully accessed, uh, and, and we encourage that to be the case. The fourth area, which is a more recent mandate provided by the board, is to support adap uh, NAPs and, adap and or adaptation planning processes up to, up to $3 million per country, but not per year, indefinitely, one-time one -time support, uh, which is why uh, Howard Bamsey would convey the message of please use this fund wisely um, while, while we have access to it. it what we'd like to do is um, share, based on uh, proposals we've received to date, some of which have initiated implementation, some what we view as good practice or considerations uh, for, for you to, 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 to ponder as you develop your adaptation plans or, or implement them in cases where for countries that already have uh, theirs approved. Um, learning so far, and, and these are discussion points, these aren't ultimate. We'd actually like to hear your experience uh, also in, in good, uh, about uh, good practices in, in adaptation planning, uh, which we will continue to use to actually review proposals to, to, to 
ensure that, uh, that, that, that they're designed for the highest impact possible. First of all, very purposeful focus, clarity of focus within a national vision. What this means is doing broad scale planning if it hasn't already been done. If it's done, then move to the next stage of greater specificity, be it sectoral, geographic focus, city planning. Um, because the more local, we all appreciate that adaptation is local, the more local we are with our planning, the more actionable and precise the, the, the plans will that come out. We, here we can take an example of Antigua and Barbuda, who has an adaptation planning proposal which is endorsed. They have a, 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 an active adaptation planning process in place in country, and, and they're focusing um, on very specific urban adaptation actions and planning actions in, in, their, in their largest cities. Um, second, good practice. Designing based on specific impacts and vulnerabilities. Adaptation actions will, of course, look very differently if we're if the great if, if the impact we're trying to address is invasive species, as was referred to our keynote yesterday morning, or um, if it's sea level rise. Start with impacts and vulnerabilities and build actions based on that. If you don't already know the impacts and vulnerabilities, then that's a logical place to start. If we do know, base your base your plans and your proposals on that place. Third. It build private sector ownership for investing in the resiliency. Now, we often talk about the importance of private sector investments and adaptation, and uh, it's not easy, and we need more examples. Well, here's an opportunity to use some funds, take some time, and really do this thoroughly in a sophisticated way. Make the case for understanding and investing in resilient profit, speaking the language of private sector. And um, private sector doesn't like uncertainty. Finance sector, especially, doesn't like uncertainty. They like they, they like the resilience of their investment. What are the cost-benefit analysis that we can provide? What are the, the cost of inaction? Use these studies to really use the use these funds in the time to really uh, strengthen the sophistication in country. We have some excellent examples from Colombia and Peru of presenting vulnerability impact assessments to, to major CEOs of the largest corporations of the company in very executive sessions with very polished materials these sorts of activities um, to actually create investments in the civilian business. And fourth, in designing the adaptation investment decision, we really envision, excuse me, we really encourage the adaptation plan to go to go beyond adaptation plan proposals to us to go beyond just um, the assessment portion and to really result in what is the vision for funding all of these priorities? Move beyond just prioritization. How will they be funded by domestic pri pri uh, private sector, domestic public, international cooperation, including, but not exclusively, the Green Climate Fund? And here you're in invited and encouraged to actually result in um, to, to producing project ideas and concept notes to the GCF, so that at the end of your adaptation planning uh, process, you have strong concept notes. That, that, that have a good chance of moving forward. So let's really use these funds to, to do the whole continuum. And a fifth example, theory of change, and this is very logical, a clear theory of change, I mean, uh, right, from the, right from the objective building from the NDCs to, to how these funds will be, will, will be used and produce actionable proposals and, and action plans. Uh, a sixth area that's very important is coherence and complementarity with other funds. Uh, especially uh, the, the Global Environment Facility and the Adaptation Fund, because we're all funds under the mechanism, but, but not exclusively. Um, also other public and private, domestic and international funding. And building in that coherence, that articulation up front, there are some proposals we receive that don't mention other adaptation planning funds coming in at the same time. Of course, that's a comment that would be sent back. Um, so engagement, uh, thorough, um, strategies are, 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 are fundamental. Um, uh, as is maximizing the use of GCF adaptation planning funds over time. Again, opportunity $3 million per country for adaptation planning, pretty, pretty significant, um, but it's, one -time, it's a, it's a one-time effort. So what's the strategy to use these funds to ensure funds over time for adaptation planning? to put in place 
investment from domestic, private, public sector, um, and other sources to ensure that the because adaptation, because any planning is iterative, of course, and, and ongoing. So, so what's the strategy at the get-go to, to, for it to be sustainable? In, in, and finally, as, as Howard mentioned, to choose a delivery partner um, purposefully, including consideration of sectoral expertise and country delivery, um, and, and, and plans and activities to strengthen in-country capacity. Those are, those are uh, some uh, uh, considerations for a strong adaptation planning proposals. Um, they're not ex exhaustive, there are many more, and we would be very happy to, to discuss them um, further with, with you. In, this is a sense of some of the indicative adaptation planning outcomes that are, that are, um, that are included in adaptation planning proposals. This is uh, articulated within the GCF readiness guidebook. Um, and normally uh, proposals are structured around one or, or, or more of these planning outcome areas. Uh, this is more detailed than can be read right now, but this is uh, also uh, information in the Ready GCF readiness guidebook of, of sub-outcome areas. And these are some specific examples of activities that have been included in, in successful adaptation planning proposals that have already been approved and, and um, have, uh, have, have funding being, uh, that has been dispersed. For example, uh, related to knowledge, information, and communication, the risk assessments and economic impact studies that underlie planning that make the case for investment, effective knowledge sharing platforms, um, a second a, a example is within a financing plan, sector-based investment plans, sector-based investment plans prepared for scaling up, adaptation investment, policy options, public-private partnerships, specific, user-specific activities that have received funding through, through GCF for adaptation plan. This is the state of play, 35 proposals, 14 of which are from LDCs and SIDS. Um, eight have been approved or endorsed uh, to date. Um, seven are currently uh, with, uh, back with uh, NDAs and, and delivery partners for uh, resubmission. And uh, 27 of the 35 proposals to date are being submitted from two delivery partners. We, we're, they, this, we really appreciate the, the yeoman's work, the, the, the tremendous support that a couple of delivery partners are, 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 are providing to, to, to countries in this area. And we remind all governments and NDAs that, that there, there's a diversity of, um, of, of uh, support opportunities out there. Um, and we especially recognize the, the work that, that, that a couple of delivery partners have provided to all the TNAs, the NAPAs, um, the, the Global Support Program that really provided a foundation for adaptation planning. And, and we remind that, that there's opportunities to work with a diversity of, of, of delivery partners moving forwards. In, in the, these are the projections of where the GCF is planning to go with, with, with the guidance of our board. Um, to in greatly increase the review the approvals um, and endorsement, uh, the, uh, the approvals and, and disbursements to adaptation planning. But this is something we need to, to do together to achieve this increase. Uh, we need uh, proposals with these that, that address the sort of considerations that we've discussed um, from the get-go. Uh, because if they don't uh, uh, include them, then we're obliged to send them back and there's a long iteration process. We'd like to speed this up as much as possible and so that's why we're trying to articulate and communicate the, the sort of considerations that, that we view and we're open to discussions on them to certain that the, the, the elements and considerations of quality um, adaptation planning proposals so we can achieve this ambitious growth in, in dispersing funds um, as, uh, as, as, as guided by, by the GCS board. Thank you very much. We appreciate your attention.